our reading public meeting for tonight. And would you please stand for the pledge? Ready to begin? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have a report out of closed session this evening. In closed session, by a vote of 5 to 0, with uh, the board took action to appoint Chad Mayberry as Director of Assessment and Accountability, effective July 1st, 2018. A, a motion to adopt the agenda, please. So moved. Second. Okay, Carol. Are there changes or additions to the agenda? There's uh, not. There's changes and also just clarification. So on um, consent item 12 M, which is the agreement with the Orange County Department of Education uh, to pay, uh, the summary uh, discussed um, numbers is all aligned with the contract. And essentially, what it is is we received additional funds from the state of California. Uh, in the addition of fifteen thousand, a little over fifteen thousand dollars spread over three years, the contract reflects the this next year's contract with the additional funds in it. So that's why the numbers don't match. Um, but essentially, all the numbers are accurate. They just don't make sense unless you have the context. But it's a three-year grant. Total grant is going to be upwards of sixty thousand um, dollars. So we did get an increase. So we're just that's reflected. The two amounts can stay different. So, the amount in the contract is accurate. It's okay. $22,000. Um, okay. the, the old amount, um, which is the addition of the new amounts that come in, that was added in 2019. And then the other one um, is on action item 17. Uh, the top of the world instructional minutes weren't 100% accurate. So we fixed that. So it's not, it's not, it didn't get to the total of the same time. So she uh, moved forward and then we had it accurate. You have it as an insert. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so it's been voting on the accurate instruction that's part of the way. Yeah. All those in favor of the agenda as amended? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. And we begin tonight with some great recognitions. So, here's the All right.
there as I do here because I've been a part of this community for so long. And so to actually kind of realize our dream in creating Lumberyard to where it's just so neat. People come in and they always seem to find somebody they know. We have a very communal bar. Um, it's just, it's worked out kind of how we wanted it to. And by the way, that picture, um, it was kind of selfish on my part. I couldn't see into slice from the people. <laughs> The bus was in the way, so I had to move it because I couldn't see how they were doing it. I, I've always told everybody uh, that ever asks about Laguna Beach and the school system and whatnot, I'm so fortunate that I was able to raise our kids in Laguna Beach because they received what I always say is a private school education on a public school budget, and you guys do such a fabulous job along with all the teachers. And it's just so thank you for all the hard work you guys do and putting it together. And, the support of school power, obviously, is just enormous, too. So, anyway, great job. Thank you. 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 students, supporting uh, our programs, uh, donation every year to, uh, to the tune of about $20,000 that go right into our programs to support the things that we need for our kids. So we're very thankful to have that um, and that partnership. I think it's, uh, it's amazing. Not every, most school districts don't have that opportunity. Um, it really does enhance the art and visual performing arts for our students. So we really appreciate that. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the Festival of Arts Foundation is now the FOA Foundation. Uh, we separated from the festival back when they were trying to move it to San Clemente. Oh, and uh, right. yeah, we were worried they were going to take our foundation and use it for something else. And so I became president of the foundation 16 years ago. And uh, so I've been president for the last 16 years. Um, Bill Darnell, when he was here, he was sort of the spearhead of getting some cash for the ceramics class. And, uh, and then he became our spokesperson for all the teachers. He kept calling all the teachers, making sure they all lined up and sent in their applications. And, uh, and so they've kept it going. And sometimes we have a little bit of a misconnect when a new teacher moves in and somebody doesn't tell them to apply. But tell them to apply. You know, we, we're ready for them. Plus, uh, TOW, El Moro, and uh, Thurston, whenever they apply for something, they usually always get something from us, too. And, They've been a little quiet lately, so you might want to, you know, we're remind them. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, we uh, we really think that the, the school is such a special place to be able to put our funds. It, uh, we see kids from kindergarten get up to the high school, and then we end up giving scholarships through our scholarship program. I'm also on the board of Festival of Arts as vice president, so I'm wearing a couple of hats. And there was a little miscommunication, I think, at a meeting recently, of worried about the new calendar change. And uh, uh, the Festival of Arts has no plans of ever stopping. Our scholarships with the uh, with the high school, and that's something that has nothing to do with uh, participation in pageant or volunteers or anything else. And so, we love you guys, and we want to make sure that uh, you know we work as partners you know, as long as we can. And so, by any chance, that, did you see the art festival when we had it in school? All the student work. Yes. Because that's I was just right. so it was so impressive all the media that our teachers expose our students to really a lot of opportunity and. All the grades. It was great. Yeah, uh, we, we give about twenty five thousand to Loka every year. Yeah. Also, and we you know how they come and fill in yeah. some of the. So we get benefit from that too. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, that's our main focus is uh, you know education for the kids and stuff. So you guys do a great job. Thank you. Thank you for making my kids so s smart. I mean, I, <laughs> as I decline in my painting years, uh, I've got two kids are gonna support you. Keep me in the restaurant. So it's okay. Good. <laughs> great. Do you want to do a photo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah. No, thankfully, um, uh, the next two people aren't necessarily going anywhere. I think they're still in their positions for another year. 
Uh, the first is uh, Sheila, PTA Council President. So, Sheila uh, does an amazing job. There's actually more people in this room when you're here than when, when we're in our <laughs> and, and we're like glued to the walls. But, um, you know, it's, it's an amazing opportunity for, for me to be involved uh, alongside the PTA and what you do to support our students. And uh, very successful PTAs in terms of raising funds uh, go a long way to help our kids um, inside and outside the classrooms. So, uh, I feel privileged to have that opportunity. I know the board also is so thankful. CLC, PTA, and merge them with uh, Top of the World, so that's all finished, and that was a big, big thing that we worked on this year. So. Seemed to go smoothly. Yeah, yeah, it went very well, so thank, thank you very much. Thank but you. also, you've allowed our various assistants and lieutenants and, and nurses to then to present to that council, and then those are PTA presidents, so it's just another way that we get to communicate. Yes. It's really valuable. Yeah, absolutely.
just had an amazing year. Uh, again, just a real uh, calm, cool, collective voice in the room. Um, and one of those folks that asks great questions. And uh, But I really appreciated just overall, when she walks into a room, uh, she knows how to take command. And I think uh, she, she clearly learned that a little bit from Robin, the way Robin interacts with uh, those in the room. But when she starts speaking at those uh, school power meetings, um, everyone calms down, looks right in, and is intent. And um, she always has a lot of amazing things to share. And so she, she too, uh, deserves uh, a recognition. Unfortunately, we'll try and catch her uh, another time. She may be feeling better. Um, but if you see her on the mound, thank her for her amazing work. Because without the team um, and that leadership, uh, it would be uh, obviously a challenge to keep school power running forward. So. It's a tough position. It is a tough position. Yeah. I, uh, put a lot of pressure on Jeff and you guys do. <laughs> I don't envy the I don't envy the, the, the new people coming in after uh, the amazing leadership you guys have. But you guys do an amazing job of kind of continuing to prop prop up your folks and and Robin, um, you're next. I promise there's no face thing, no songs that we've made for tonight. But uh, just come on up. Just, yeah, some, some beat poetry. Interpretive dance? I have yeah, poetry. Okay, that's where we're going to team up. <laughs> dance. <laughs> so with uh, Robin, uh, one of the first things uh, I remember sitting down having lunch with Robin, and I think the first thing she said is, uh, and this is probably in July, uh, is, what's your fun and need idea? And she has no idea what that was. Uh, she said, you better start thinking because we need an answer from you. Uh, but Robin is just... A special person for me. Um, she's always been someone who uh, picks up the phone and calls, texts, um, is, has a philosophy of over communicating and in our business that's important. Um, you know, it's uh, For us to be able to know um, what is going on, on the school power side, what we're trying to accomplish, how we can partner together, um, what ideas that she's uh, hearing about, whether it's uh, changing some things and how they do their, their dinners to uh, locations of things that she's, she's just so nimble and quick to adjust. Um, so I, as, a, as a leader, watching her lead that organization, um, I have a lot of uh, praise for you and how you're able to navigate that, keep the ship rolling forward every year outdoing yourself. And, um, and never want to raise your hand and say, I deserve credit because that's not the way you function. And so you, of all people, take a step back and push people out in front of you um, and are just there doing the work. And so we are just, one, I'm privileged and thankful to have had the opportunity to work with you. Uh, I know my team is as well. And uh, you will be missed. I know you'll be in behind trying to continue to help uh, support Sarah. I know she'll do a fantastic job because you've left the ship in an amazing place for her. And she'll still have Chris, though I'm not sure he'll, she'll be able to control him as well as you have. Um, uh, but again, it's just a, an amazing opportunity. I know that uh, we'll just be able to uh, have the opportunity to work with you over these past few years. So. Thank you. Yeah, great. You get your choice. It's up to you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> When's your last day, Robin? Um, it's, I'm kind of phasing out in July, like, okay. I'm still mapping out where all the dead bodies are buried. <laughs> okay. Do you have, like, a celebration this summer planned for just, like, freedom? Can I ask this question? Um, yeah. you know, there have, it's, there's been, we're, I'm good. Yeah, so I'm not, okay, right. okay, okay, good, good, good. good. I just want to say this, I work with Robin both as a parent and then as a board member, and I just, you also brought a sense of humor when things were high stress. So I appreciated that as a parent volunteer sitting in those rooms. And then you kept us on track when we needed to focus and when the chatter in the room got completely off topic, which it can. So I just think you were professional, but you also <clears throat> always felt so integrated into the culture and positive energy of the school. So I appreciate it. I love working with you. And we've known each other since the mom's club, since our kids were babies. So mm -hmm. it's such Thank a privilege. You. Yeah. Thank you. I um, All of my heroes have been educators. So it's um, my my mom and my dad are both educators, and so it's just it's been an honor for me to get to play a role in school power support of all of you, and, and to make a difference. If, I mean, you would not want me in a classroom in a million years. <laughs> so so this has been my way to. You might achieve real highly if you were. Yeah. <laughs> to, um, 
to Through School Power and working with all our amazing volunteers and business owners like Carrie Redburn and this generous community. It's just to work together and bring everyone together and be, play a part of that in supporting you all and what you're doing for students has been an honor. So I want to thank you all.
Each of these is a big deal, and so is the stress they cause. The different levels of support for the proposed change at the different school levels is totally understandable. I had no idea of the impact of our late schedule until my kid entered high school. So I understand how so few elementary school families surveyed supported the proposed change because they don't understand and appreciate what the high schoolers are going through. I heard people at the first informational meeting saying, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. They don't know. Understandably, but they don't know. Who does know? The 9th through 12th graders survey, they know. They're living it every day. They're the ones experiencing the stress that our calendar creates. I believe the survey results are clear. 100% of the calendar committee members believe to move up the start date is the best choice. The overwhelming majority of the student survey want the change. The overwhelming majority of the staff survey think it's the right thing to do. The parents of the kids at the elementary schools are our only group who didn't support the proposed change. Even Thurston was 50-50. We all want what's best for the kids. If your goal is to support the kids, I don't see how, based on the kids and the staff survey results, if your goal is to support the kids, I don't see how you can do anything other than support the proposed change. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry to hurry you up. No, that's okay. I appreciate it. But I was going to keep going until you buzz me off. <laughs> <laughs> Is there any other public comment on items not on the agenda? I didn't have one. Okay. Same topic. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, my name is Kirsten Warner. I um, unexpectedly stood up last Tuesday, and so I gathered my thoughts <laughs> since then because I wasn't prepared. I just felt like I might have been assumed in the big room that was a little rowdy and I didn't really agree. So I, I stood up and I wanted to represent the kids. I wanted to speak as a kid um, because the kids weren't there and this implicates the kids the most. So I wrote a letter um, and I sent out to a bunch of um, friends and just saying um, to encourage a compromise um, to the proposed school calendar just to try, I mean, I just, I want a Christmas or a holiday winter break to be the semester break. So um, I said, you can, uh, if, if you agree, please write the board and let them know or simply reply here if you support. Um, and I got a lot of responses. I, I had just two days, I had 11 families respond that equal 27 children, students. Um, one reply likes the calendar just as is. I mean, not as is, your proposed calendar. So this is what I this is what I wrote, um, very similar to you. Um, last time the calendar was made up for review um, for a change, I was completely against it for the same emotional reasons um, that are being defended today by that group. Um, now with older kids, I see the effect of the outside educational calendars. Um, those calendars can't be avoided, uh, and the stress to the students can't be avoided either. Um, the kids were the largest group that participated in the survey. We talked about 966 kids, 54% uh, in favor of the change. The majority of the kids um, are asking as to have a change. So I don't know if this is scientific or not, but if you consider the 16% that didn't know or didn't have an opinion, if you add that 16% to the 31 that did not support, you're only at 47%, even taking that group of kids that didn't really care. So even at 47%, you, they still don't have a majority. Add that 16% to 54, and you have 70% majority. And that's a large majority. And the number one factor um, was to end the semester at winter break was 60%. That was the largest of all factors for any side opposing or supporting. So I really do think that we need to somehow work in semester break. Um, I've heard this opinion, um, well, the kids don't get to decide. And I, I'm like, well, why not? You know, these are the ones that are most affected. Um, I just wish that the survey results can make it easier for you all to make a decision. Um, we need to listen to our kids. Uh, we've been telling them they have a voice. They've given us their voice, their answer, and we need to show that they're being listened to. So I'm going to hand this, I'm going to let you read the rest, or and listen, um, you guys can read, you can see who replied, some have 
little extra things like the bell schedule. They're in favor of the bell <laughs> schedule. So, uh, so anyway, there you go. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Any other comments on items not on tonight's agenda? Okay, let me begin with uh, reports from um, the group of representatives here. Um, well, I don't really have a report other than to say I'm honored to serve as the new president for on behalf of teachers, and I look forward to working with the cabinet collaboratively. And um, I'm we're currently trying to like schedule some meetings and get that all taken care of. So that's where we're at. Off to a good start. Thank you for taking on that role. Yes. CSA Martin. Um, yes. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that. I feel fortunate that we've had another successful close of our school year. The CCA is pleased with our contract and moving forward. Um, I just um, in regards to the lumberyard with Kerry, any time I've ever asked him for anything for the CCA for our meetings, just this time he even gave me double the amount. So um, you know that is part of our community bond here. That and, and other businesses also. But since Kerry was here tonight, I recognize that fact that he's always open to supporting us. Um, an, an issue that I think is really important, and uh, Jeff Dixon started it, and now Ryan and Xavier. Um, something that's dear to me is I got involved with the CERT program, and many of you know I'm a registered nurse. But beyond that is we have disasters here in our community, and we can have them at any time. And you know, it's one of those things where we put together a safety plan, and it looks good on paper, and certainly everybody goes, wow, it's great, and you've done a great job, and everybody that's worked on the committee. But until we have a real emergency where we need the hands-on on the deck, we have to have people with buy-in. And so um, when this International Safety Committee uh, October meeting came up, which is nearby in Carlsbad, uh, and Mr. Conlon sent out who would like to be on that, I immediately <coughs> responded. And I know other people have responded at different because I've been encouraging classified people to get involved, especially those that are directly involved with children, although certificate <coughs> needs to be involved, and of course our site administrators. Because when that happens, we do need buy-in from everyone. And the teachers will be with the students. Our classified staff will be with students or with, with facilitating what is happening during that disaster. Um, so I, I really, I'm thankful that I work in a district that really accepts the fact that everyone needs to be, have professional development and training. And of course, you know, I've spoken about that on other areas with Dr. Odipo over here with the instructional assistants, especially. So I want to thank you for really that, allowing all of us to buy in to the completeness of our school district. <coughs> and with that, summer school start. <laughs> <laughs> Jump right back into it. Mm -hmm. I don't believe we have any organization reps here. For no, you're you're going to do their duty for us. The board members, if you attend any assignments, no, 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 attend school for me and mostly about timing and calendaring and making sure that it was a timely event or not. So that was good. And then Jan and I also attended the CCA slash ROP um, meeting on the 19th for the budget. Um, we'll be getting the ongoing funding now and, and still coming through a weird little bit, but Patty's not, she's going to squeeze them for every dime she can get. Um, uh, summer school classes, uh, there are, they're kind of all over. People, a lot of good ones out there. Um, we had a WASC review. We have yet to hear back. They have a little issue with our JPA and how that's set up, but she seems to think that's not going to be a problem just because it was vetted and revetted and vetted and vetted again. Um, let's see. Oh, the catalog came out and the, the, the problem, not problem, but what they're finding is making sure that dual credit classes are coded as such in the catalog because if all the teachers don't attend the, the orientations that the college does, they don't, they aren't able to say that they get dual credit. She's working on that 
since we have a, a, a set curriculum for each class, she's hoping that, that we will be able to forego that and send one teacher rather than everybody having to come and then have, having a two-tier system because if a kid is taking the class, it's the class that should be dual credit. So that was the, um, the biggest thing. And then we will actually be having for our new fall offerings. God, um, I can't remember what I mean. Oh, medical hospital careers um, and for our uh, health pathway and, a, and actually a, a, a doctor from Pendleton, a gal, Heather Lewis, is going to be teaching it. And I guess she's really into it. And then, uh, an intro to emergency medicine. So those two will be offered on campus. Uh, next. Our campus. Our campus. Um, wow. they they actually campus. Bill. Awesome. After Bell. On our campus next. Okay. So which would be nice because we've had great buy in for the EMT stuff. So did I miss anything? Just that they, you mentioned it at our study session that they are accommodating our kids because they start earlier. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So they start so much earlier. That our kids get accommodated by going extra an extra half hour so they make up the minutes because that our OP classes are really they have a minutes requirement yeah that's well. they have to do that so, yeah, that's it yep other than that that meeting not any for me either so Dr. Flory um just two things one uh, we uh, we did have our uh, SALPA council meeting we have about three of those a year. Quite interesting voting when there's only two of you who are voting. Meetings <laughs> uh, go very fast. Um, it's kind of odd emotion and, and all that. But uh, it, it's a, again a nice partnership. We do have um, a, a new uh, person that went into director at the self level, um, which I believe is Scott. Um, so we're just uh, at the tail end of the year trying to figure it all out because they haven't replaced her. She's the director of Saddleback. So we, they've had to backfill. So it was a little. Uh, Challenging for the last four or five months, uh, but we figured we have an iron out. Uh, I mean, uh, it's, it's happy looking forward to this next year. Uh, uh, just appreciate the partnership and uh, we'll settle back on that. Um, I also attended a uh, thick map board meeting as an alternate for Ms. Um, Badal, Dr. Badal from uh, Capo, um, and that was up in uh, Santa Barbara on Sunday. Uh, again, just something about the budget, something about how the money for CCA and RN uh, is coming through a very unique process. Uh, there are representatives uh, from the community colleges who were there present kind of explaining the intent of how it's supposed to be delivered. There's still a lot of, as we all know, legwork that has to get done because there's a lack of clarity in process and procedure. So uh, though that was proposed by the governor, governor and they agreed to it, there really is not a specific way by which it has to be done just yet. So there is going to need to be some things worked out. Uh, again, luckily, you're in a room full of superintendents and county superintendents who all are demanding access to their funds. So this representative, who I believe is the vice president of the Chancellor's office, was hearing that loud and clear. Um, and Nick, uh, Nick, with Les, I say Schweizer, he's the uh, deputy state superintendent. Uh, he and Karen actually uh, are kind of involved, but he's always at those meetings as well. And so he heard it loud and clear, and he was very clear. He said, yes, we need to get this out. There was also uh, just an unfortunate uh, situation where the California Department of Ed submitted our ESSA plan as a state to the federal government. Um, we were all under the assumption it was going to fly right through. It flew right off the desk into the attorney's offices, um, and the attorney's offices of the U.S. Department of Ed said there's compliance issues that still need to be ironed out. So the That's not shocking at all. The, the U.S. Department of Ed folks actually felt uh, that that aren't in the legal side were so, did not expect this, um, so it slowed it all down. So we're all waiting to see what the implications are for the Title One dollars and Title Two dollars. Um, again, there's no Plan B because they weren't expecting that this was going to happen. Um, but it, the the folks at the CD are confident that they'll be able to get it ironed out and addressed. Um, but again, it's a lot of change. We've had change with the SSA on the federal side, and we've had a lot of change on our side in California related to LCAP, LCFF funding, and trying to meld the two concepts together um, is not always the easiest thing to do. So uh, the board at last meeting saw the LCAP addendum for federal addendum. So they're trying to create some alignment so that it's not redundancies, um, but it does create a lot of confusion for us to jump through the process. So again, things are still moving at the state level, um, especially the federal level uh, around education. So. 
appreciate the opportunity to be able to go and attend the, those meetings and hear directly and firsthand and uh, from, from those various counties as well. So it's each region has a representation. So uh, Elm Harris is actually on it for our region, but that also swoops down into San Diego County as well. So It's just myself representing. But not even set up community college. No, just the chancellors, just the high level chancellor's, chancellor's okay. office that oversees all of the community colleges. Yeah. So. Because that's what we've seen through the CCA is that it's been tough for them to work this out back there when I was a kid. That's where yeah. they were at. <laughs> yes, and that's what was articulated by a couple of superintendents uh, that the money is ours, you're just the one sitting on it. And so. Yeah. Your job is to give it to us. <laughs> it's not yours. It's not yours. <laughs> right, so don't, yeah. don't tell us how to spend it necessarily. Um, so we'll, we're going to connect the chain for through that. Uh, but I think a little guidance from the state level. Uh, I know Superintendent Portland seems well aware that this needs to be addressed. And I know that uh, the uh, Southern, I think it's like uh, Donald, uh, who was the one really pushing to get this through, um, not in the way that it came through, but some dedicated funding to CTE, um, he would be jumping on it. As well, with uh, as with my understanding, so yeah. lots still going on in the San Diego area. So it's never dangerous. Yeah, never. Starting next. I know that you've got a lot of similar work as well. Yeah. So I wanted to first thank you all for your support of the employee appreciation barbecue last week. It's nice to see you there, and I know our employees were happy to be able to sit and chat for um, a period of time and. Just keeps getting better and better. Um, I'd like to acknowledge the HR and public communications team <laughs> for their work in, in all the preparation and cooking. Uh, well, and our administrators who um, right. were behind the grill. <laughs> so that's like we had to say, yes. <laughs> yeah, worked behind the scenes. Is that open kitchen? Yes. See what's going on. <laughs> so we had a lot of fun. And then I'd like to welcome Sarah to your new role. And I look Thank forward you. to working with you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Have a great new year. I'm coming so up. Too. Thank you. Thank you. And Margaret, I'm, we're always happy that you're still in that seat and we'll continue to work collaboratively with you as well. Thank you. Jeff. Yeah, so just a few things for me. Welcome to Sarah. I love working with you, so thank you. I always get to learn great things from you. Uh, summer school started yesterday, so I spent. Uh, I got to go out top of the world and the high school today, and teachers were knee deep in direct instruction for math at the high school this morning, and um, kids were knee deep in uh, building sentences and writing journals. So it's great to see. Um, we've completed three days of NGSS planning uh, training with our middle school teachers today. So Friday, Monday, Tuesday, that was going really well, and unconscious bias training with the support of our. Um, Stakeholder groups just continued uh, day one completed two and a half days of that. So thank you for your support. Thank you. Um, consent calendar is next. So are there any items that one would like to remove? Then I'd ask for a motion to approve consent calendar items A through N. Any opposition to comment on the consent calendar? Can we count on it? <laughs> Are there any questions for the president? Well, we have a discussion because if you want to discuss it, we need to pull. So I think that, I mean, it's just the minor question. Okay, minor question. Um, <laughs> our, um, our, our lunch prices be consistent with other districts? And my other question is, um, I threw the bucket at our new advice and the people of like an international school safety conference. Um, could we have a report back out of that? So, you know, the rest of us who don't go might be better prepared, or you know, your colleagues who don't go might be better prepared. Yeah, I think you know, the, the intent of sending folks to the conference is that it comes back to the safety committee it influences the, the safety plans that we have at our school sites, determining um, uh, how their adjustments need to be made, what did they learn from the conference, and how does that play out in, in uh, uh, 
and each individual site, because every site's unique, obviously. But, uh, uh, open campus, closed campuses, uh, so on and so forth. Uh, I see it as a nice step as we segue into the fall, where we're going to have uh, staff on the kind of to come in and do uh, an assessment of our grounds uh, that we're aligning. So they're going to be on campus kind of watching the flow of, of students over the course of the day, but, and it's been scheduling, working on scheduling that with those folks. So I think it's, it's all part of what we're going to do. So I, I expect that you'll see uh, layers of that in the uh, safety plans, but we're happy to add some things in the weekly about activities okay. and things that we're learning and uh, takeaways and take away. She actually probably missed me. And about the gun training, are we going to have any of the guns at the school? Is there no. anything? Yeah, that was part of the. No, the, the training, the, there was an add on component of that that was, uh, the, the title is, excuse me, Top Gun Training. Uh, <laughs> but the, <laughs> uh, the, the bulk of the training actually is uh, on uh, kind of the first aid, trauma and first mm -hmm. aid uh, that needs to. Triage that needs to happen, unfortunately, in those situations. Uh, obviously, a part of that uh, component uh, is uh, going off to and learning about gun safety and so on and so forth. And in order to learn about gun safety, uh, there needs to be uh, traditionally firing that goes off. Right? They're, they're doing that in the actual firing range. I, I believe this one, we don't have anybody who's attending that. Um, there's one person who expressed a potential interest in going, uh, but at this point, we're still, we haven't registered anybody because we don't register until the board approves. Uh, but we'll bear, we're trying to verify who exactly had the interest. I know we had a couple of teachers interested, but I think they misunderstood. The day one conference was not that, and we're sending people to the conference, uh, uh, not necessarily that component of the conference. So. Okay, thank you for that. I just had one. Did anyone else have a question? I just had a um, wondering on the renewal of the the forming meetings. Can I just a second? Mm -hmm. Is that in the future? Can you? Mike has information of like people who renew it. Just, yes. Just, just have an idea of how popular that we is. We actually put that in the quarterly um, report that Anna Karen has generated. Um, okay. So we'll have another one of those coming so, up yeah. very soon. Okay. So, yeah. You might be up to like five. I think I really love it every other Tuesday. Yes. Some chat we're chatting spouses and relatives. <laughs> well, we can't see who who watches. <laughs> I keep telling my kids, but it's so weird. Okay, and my question. <laughs> and um, we have a motion and a second. And so all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? There is five vote. Uh, we have no information items tonight because we have a lot of action items. So our first action item, item 14. Approval of the local control and accountability plan and annual update. Dr. Lupo. Yes, so thank you. Uh, we'll bring this forward um, for final approval. Um, we have not received any questions or feedback on our outcomes. We have not received that. Yes, so we're required to respond. Actually, right. Superintendent Destiny is required to respond, and we haven't received any. So, so that means we're good. So we're submitting. We yeah. have a yeah. public hearing last uh, right. last four days. Right. Uh, no changes to what's been submitted for approval. Okay, so um, public comment on the final approval of the health check plan. Okay. So we have uh, you have a question? Question. Yes. question. yes. But this is kind of the static year, right? Mm -hmm. During the period. So it is. Right. So it's just yes. So it's just we have a motion to move. Second. Okay. Carol, any discussion? Thank you, Dr. Lupo. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Action item 15 approval of the general agenda for the local control accountability plan. Dr. Lupo. So, thank you. So, this is new for us this year. It does replace the former LEA plan. Um, so, the CONAP plus the LCAP plus the federal addendum with full uh, approval uh, means that we can expend our funds. So it's our math equation is uh, CONAP plus plus LCAP plus viral addendum. So this is a piece, and this piece of those three items talks through our strategy. How are we spending our funds? What does that look like? And so for just a little bit of context, title one, two, and three is in the amount of $270,000.
Yes, essentially what would happen is um, if the state can't get approval from the federal government related to this being sufficient and getting everything approved as our accountability measures, um, then we, as all districts in the state, would not be able to expend federal dollars until such time that it's officially approved. Uh, so it's really important that they get this done before October so that school districts um, can expend funds or they will have to be so us having from the 
any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Well, it seems like we're going to talk about longer on these things. There's so yes. much work. I think it does take so much work. Those in the healthcare, those in the budget, so you think your guys down there, down there, yeah. down there yeah. Yes. we do appreciate it. Absolutely. And their reward is that they don't need to come to the meeting. <laughs> 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 I've tried to volunteer them several times. You did? <laughs> They decline. Respectfully. 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 Thank you. Item 17. Approval of instructional minutes for Laguna Beach Unified School District. Dr. Depot. Thank you. So for Ed Code, we're required to verify to each site that meets minimum requirements. And our site two is going to be in the chart for Public comment. Board questions? Uh, Dr. I don't know off the top of my head, but I can, um, I can, it's right on the CD website. I think there's no right. max, it's just that once. There's no maximum. Oh, there's no maximum. We can keep it forever. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the district, some districts set um, uh, percentages above the minimum, above the minimums, as mm -hmm. as what they would like to have as their minimums. Uh, other districts align strictly to the, the minimum. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, there's no, no kind no of max. max that they would say minimum. So minimum 180 school days, minimum 64,200 minutes for high okay. school, that sort of thing. So no maximum. Any other questions? Motion? Second. 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 So we have four instructional minutes uh, with these sorts of situations. Uh, again, this is what we're submitting for next year uh, as approval. If there's uh, mitigating circumstances, uh, we can file for a J13, uh, which would then, uh, in both instances, whether it's the fire when we shut down or we may look uh, at, uh, we also can file when we have an anomaly in attendance. working out of class 
costs over a, a good amount of this year, uh, maintaining a lot of these functions. Okay. I was doing some of the student activity. Yeah, but, then but also, also he was students. doing some uh, follow attendance follow-ups for oh, students. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was doing. Kind of intervention side of the house. Okay. Uh, so we can, we can try, try that for the year as well, try and try to get and track them down. Try and track them down, keep them accountable. Scott does a nice job uh, with sending the students for reaching out and establishing relationships with you guys important and bring that follow up. Not afraid to call parents and mm -hmm. do the work there. Uh, this was one that just we really wanted to make sure that we were in the diligence before we brought it forward. Um, it was a request that was made fairly early on um, in, I would say, late October, November, <laughs> late fall. Uh, which we said we want to go through the whole year and then come back to us again and tell us if we think they uh, uh, CSCA uh, supported the work there. They were able to uh, help create, create an evaluation. Uh, Lucy's uh, worked with Dr. Holloman and his That's staff to determine the need. What you'll see in the statistics of data related to attendance is our actual attendance rates are worse this year than last year as it relates to the high school. Uh, I don't believe our attendance is actually worse. I think our county is better. Right? Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so this, this this has really has helped out and will also help improve our systems to mm -hmm. identify students early on, uh, work with families early on, make sure we're getting the information they need so that our counselors, our staff can respond in a way that the follow up is as mm -hmm. necessary. So this is a parent to Dr. Alvis. As a high school parent, I'm going to say that any improvement in the system mm -hmm. is exactly. greatly appreciated because the system is not that efficient as a high school parent. So, I might not understand this. So, there's going to be one full time person that's keeping track if students are there, and another five and a half hour a day person that is calling if a student isn't there. I don't know the specific rules. So they're both the same job description. Okay, so we're so there's two. Correct. It's it's more support. Wow. Um, yes, to do more of the of the follow up pieces. Because it's been a few years now, but when my my niece was there, the attendance person was my neighbor, and she, you know, she was on the phone right away. Child that was that's how the day happened. Here. And is it, a, is it a function of who's doing it? I, I don't want to make that judgment, but if they're just too busy, it's so they definitely need, be. So they need 16 hours a day to keep track of if the kids are there? We evaluated the entire, the, all of the duties within the office mm -hmm. and all of the systems in place, and it was determined that this was an essential need. Yeah, because there's period absences. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not just a lot of day, it's a lot to break down. That's what earlier in the year when Dr. Baldwin was talking, he said, we got the period absences. Right, there's also it's been shifts in data recording requirements related to uh, oh, yeah. how things are coded. So for many, many years, if a student was uh, marked absent and they, they never followed up on that absence, this is not you know the regions is all in the districts. Uh, it was never followed up on, the student was just considered uh, you know, absent, lost in space, I guess, for lack of a better term. The state has required now that all of those whether uh, it's now converted to an unverified, un excuse, unverified absence, which <laughs> is a choice. So our job uh, is to address that, is to figure out where those students are, we roll out follow-up, which is a significant amount of work, especially when you have a transfer rate that's upwards of 70%. Okay, not unlike many other districts like ours, uh, Irvine is similar, so like either of the places I've been, have very high transfer rates because it takes three period so, absences. Right? At a high school to be considered a trend. So we have an obligation to start really kind of buckling down on that, while at the same time having accurate data for, so that we can take students through the SAR process, our student attempt review board process. Mm -hmm. If you don't have accurate information, you go down that, that road, and it goes to a judge or you know, to that extent, they're going to expect that the data and the information is accurate. So there is a lot of work that needs to be done there. That was one of the reasons that uh, Ms. Winston and I said we're not going to jump on this right away. We want to do an evaluation. We want you to. Determine why, you know, what's the need, how's this function in the department. And uh, after her, after Lisa went over and spent time, it has come back that this is something that they think is really important and valuable to the site. So, well, and if the, hopefully the truancy rate will go down, right? It'll be right. accurate and will go down. And in that case, it comes in the daily evaluation report, which is what you guys always do with staff and how everyone's working and where they're going tomorrow. Right. Yeah, and how everything is good. This need does not exist at any other sites. That the, the need for a 
additional year. Correct. Right but, but you're aware we uh, we have we evaluate support at each of the schools. Right. So a few right. years ago we added additional office support right. for top of the world so right. that right. to that's maintain so social so, so we so always it's evaluate. It's just, it's just a part of the evaluation right. process. Yes. To, to, that's good. That's yeah. Cool. Well, I can understand if like Carol said, I mean we're accounting better and so maybe more students won't be truant, but our goal is really to have students be in school and not to punish them because they were truant. I would be sure. Well, they're sure they're under obligation by law to, if they're absent for, an excuse absence for illness or right, yeah, it's a different set. But even then, students who are absent for extended illnesses, we have an obligation to reach out and determine, right. is there something going on? Uh, there's child fine obligations there as well. So um, it, when you look at our chronic absenteeism rate as being as high as it is, we have work to do. So uh, that is a metric by which we're judged. So I think it behooves us to put energy and, and money towards getting this situated uh, and getting a system in place as strong that is addressing uh, our attendance um, simply for the matter of it's, it's part of our accountability measures. And so we have got to put in a focus in that to make sure that we're making some progress. Can I just be about social so, yeah, but but I, I think I think we need to be doing something on that other end too. It fits there at least I can see it. Like the bottom line is we have these programs are not supported by the state. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Yeah, here's uh oh, oh, hold on, sorry. Simple math, I need to convince them. Uh, item 20, approval to revise job description for communication specialist and increase work day from seven hours per day to eight hours per day. Thank you. So you may recall back, I believe it was January, when we brought forward a job description for the technology choices. We had reevaluated those goals. And one of the things that we noticed is that the district website functions, technology, of course, changing so quickly, um, Though that role was actually associated with the teacher position, and it's actually cla considered classified employee work. So um, at, through, since that time, we have reevaluated that role, and, and the TOSA technology are really focusing on how to use technology within the classroom setting. And so we have to look at where does this the website functions best fit, and it really <coughs> does fit with the communications role um, because that person is really in charge of a lot of uh, the communication branding, making sure that things are consistent, that things that the news is posted, things are updated. So it made sense to associate it with this role. And so with those additional duties, uh, would, would require an additional hour a day. Um, and so you see that reflected here. So since we're bringing it forward for revising the job description with those duties included, we took a look at the whole job description, shortened up the title, um, and <laughs> made it a little more descriptive of what the job actually is. And so you see um, updates to this job description here. So uh, if this, uh, we are recommending revising this job description as it's indicated here and increasing the work day and hour day. Public comment? Public questions? So, second. Discussion. Thank you. Makes sense. Seems like it's new. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Action item 21, revised job description, data support specialists. Thank you. So um, whenever we have a, a vacancy, um, and especially with a one of one job, uh, where we have one person who does it, um, we always want to look at it, especially in the area of technology. So um, this job description, um, we're recommending several updates uh, to focus more on the data role. Um, since we have our technology tools uh, more focused on the training role, um, there isn't as much need to do training. It's more new employee onboarding that this person would do some of, but the primary function of the job is really to support our uh, increasing needs in data and databases such as CalPads. Like For public comment, questions? This, this will this will be the, the calculation, <coughs> yes. right? Everyone that everyone uh, is dying now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, our hope is 
that we find someone who has experience with tau pads and student information systems like Aries that are lots of data. Yes, yeah. lots yeah. of data yeah. generated for the world. This didn't even exist years ago. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So. And Lisa, do you think that the people are coming? Well, um, because there are a lot of, it seems like there's a lot of jobs out there, people that there that have this kind of experience. Yes, but one of the benefits we have here is that we, we pay well, um, and it's a great place to work. So I think anyone who is has the experience outlined in this job description would be very interested in this position. Great. Full time position? Yes. And there's no change to the salary range for um, hours or benefits. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? I am 22. Approval agreement for contracted services with West Health Advocate Solutions Inc. to provide employee online realm services with a not to exceed amount of 23,000. Thank you. Yeah. So um, we've talked to you uh, several times about our employee wellness subcommittee, uh, subcommittee of the insurance committee that's been meeting um, ongoing this year. And you'll see in the backup for this item that we have focused on developing goals and strategies that we would like, that we think are really important for our employees. Um, and so uh, we received a rebate from Blue Shield um, for an overpayment of ACA fees. So we decided to utilize that to form this wellness subcommittee and to really put the, that money um, forward for employee wellness. So over this last year, we have done a number of assessment uh, as assessing different carriers, different um, vendors for wellness programs. And we uh, decided to recommend um, Health Advocate, which may sound familiar because there also are employee assistance program. So we felt like they had a really nice comprehensive uh, online program, uh, as well as the district can initiate challenges through that program. Mm -hmm. And employees can earn points and get rewards for, for that. Um, and so uh, you'll see here a contract for Health Advocate, Health, health Advocate uh, and their wellness program, and um, we'll begin uh, implementation of that in August when employees come back. We're planning to hold a kickoff health fair um, right after the welcome back breakfast, so right after people eat their big breakfast and donuts. <laughs> um, they can actually have biometric screenings and um, can actually get more information about the online program they can earn points for completing certain tasks like going to the doctor. So many labs. Yes. Right. Yes. So yeah, actually, the, there's a health right. process. They get points for health tracking. Right. Um, right. Yes. And so uh, we're going to continue to look for um, things that our employees need in terms of wellness, but we feel like this is a good start. Um, and so this contract uh, would kick us off. So is this going to work in conjunction with the, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think, don't we have a call in? So if, if an employee is in crisis of some sort, they can call that. So this will be in conjunction. With yes. Okay. Yes. So, so it's a kind of a one-stop shop. Oh, good. Um, like if you log into they, the, they, are they doing that part too? Yes. Yeah. So okay, they so do both. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So That's we good. currently have the the EAP, which offers free counseling mm -hmm. uh, sessions, online counseling to anyone within the household of the employee. Um, this would be for employee only, should just clarify that, um, but it is a, a good start because we, what we hear from employees is that they don't really, you know, they feel healthy, they tend not to go to the doctor and then until they feel sick. And we really want to focus on prevention and encouraging healthy habits and, and, and uh, social emotional wellness as well. Mm -hmm. Other comment? Other questions? So this is a one year, one year kind of to try it? The agreement is for three, so we have agreed to that, um, and we can reassess at that point. Um, but we feel like we would need more than a year to come in. Right. And we're comfortable with if we don't get another rebate, so yeah. we're comfortable yeah. with yes. that cost. Part of that. Yes, because part of it, uh, we are, are within the cap, even still with this mm -hmm. amount, um, because we were able to negotiate such good rates. And it's for any employee, they don't have to be in Blue Shield, it's for anyone whatever insurance plan they have. They don't even need to be enrolled in health benefits. So this would okay. also cover oh, our part-time employees. Oh, that's oh, right. Right. Great. Yes, so that was one of the priorities that we looked at, was we wanted to make sure, just like our EAP covers all employees, that this program would also address that. So at least they're getting some sort of screening yeah. um, as part of that. And then it's, it's had a three-year contract, and then, so we're obligated this way, and then it automatically renews another three. Unless we choose not to do it. Correct. So that would not be a problem for you. No. So this 
years and we do people type. Right. That'll allow us to assess are people really using it? Are they going to really encourage people to use it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. PR, so PR plan too. Absolutely. Yep. We're already working on it. And in fact, um, so we have the ability to set up. Employees can set up their own challenge, challenges within the system, so they can even just challenge a teammate. So they can kind of, you know, we're going to do a walking challenge, or we're going to do a water challenge. Um, and so we can initiate uh, organizational challenges also to try to encourage some, some participation. That's at least on a weekend, right? Looking forward to that. <laughs> I'm not running it though. Services from Nicole Miller and Associates Inc. to conduct investigations into the legal residency of enrolled students within the jurisdiction of Laguna Beach Unified School District, as well as risk management investigations for 2018 19 with a not to exceed amount of 85000 And that's last one for okay. me. Uh, so, this is our annual contract with Nicole Miller to uh, conduct investigations as on an as needed basis. This current um, uh, recommendation is for uh, not to exceed amount of eighty-five thousand dollars. As you know, sometimes we can't anticipate um, how many investigations or residency verifications we need to complete. So um, we hope not to, you know, need to reach that amount. But we feel that that's a good amount to um, start with for this year. Public comment. Public questions. So what was our amount we reached this last year? I know that off the top of my head, but I know we had to bring it back. I think a couple yeah, months. I think we did because yeah. we had some unusual right. situations. Um, have you looked for the other people on the, on the support staff? Yeah. Because yes. I don't know where that creation report is now. I was just. No, it depends on the investigation. Yeah, okay. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yes. I will. Um, action number 24 approval annual contract with Atkinson, Angelson, Loya, Lou, and Romo for legal services in an amount not to exceed 170000 Mr. Dixon. Thank you, President Vickers. This is establishing our annual not to exceed for Atkinson and Angelson. I'll leave off the rest of the names. <laughs> um, it's, as you recall, we set up a contract with them last year, a three year agreement, but we would have to come back to the board for rates and not to exceed, and that was two of the 170000 so we're recommending that we reestablish that for this fiscal year um, for Atkins and Nelson for $170,000. Public comment? Board questions? You're saying that's over three years? Or for one year. One, one fiscal year, they're not to exceed, like but we have a three-year contract. <laughs> I wish. It was like three yeah. Years. <laughs> okay, Carol, uh, discussion. I just, I'm grateful that we think attorneys work for these companies. You know, it's such great service for that, and it's a public service for the attorneys. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? First, by vote. Action item 25 approval agreement with Best Best and Krieger for legal counsel related to special education issues with a nod to exceed amount of 30000 for the 2018 19 school year. So this is with Best Best and Krieger. It's their annual contract not to exceed, so they, we can continue to support our students and provide the service to our families. Public comment. Board questions? Board discussion? Board discussion. Education Legal Council for the 2018-19 with a not to exceed amount of fifty thousand dollars. Thank you, Council Yes, so thank you. We've been working with Harbottle uh, for both uh, for 
for general education, but we'd like to include uh, general special ed that would include student services as well in this annual not to exceed. Any comments or questions? Motion? Second. Second. Discussion. No, yeah, I know. Right, right. Just to because 
they have work for they charge us for yeah, do they charge us for uh the whole thing? There's a lot of good new things that happen. Yeah. Our, and our intent for this, what I can tell you, and I appreciate uh, Mr. Dixon, all the work that he put into to doing this as well as Mr. Zeta. Um, we want to be good neighbors. We really want to evaluate how can we best support the programming that goes on. We all know that uh, in our city, we have a very limited amount of field space uh, for our students. Uh, so when you factor in all the youth sports that our students take part in, our fields are a key cog in ensuring that that happens. So we want to make sure we have enough funds to maintain those fields with joint use. Uh, we also want to make sure that with our city agreements that we're uh, working hand in hand. And I really do appreciate uh, Mr. Petey and all the work with your city staff as we continue to talk about um, joint use, which we'll be bringing forward uh, sometime in the near future here to, to the board for approval. Um, but we made an agreement, and, and Jeff and I both agree, that the lights are on until 9 o'clock. And that's just for a safety issue at the high school. Um, you know, we have a lot of people that use that facility all the way up through that point in time. So we just we need to be mindful that that's the time. And if it's available, let's make it available to the community at the price that makes sense and not charge the electricity that we're already paying for regardless. It's really not good for the neighbors. So again, uh, it might not be the, our neighbors over there might not be uh, super excited to like to be on until nine, but um, it is what it's what we need to do. And, uh, uh, so, and we are looking to, as much as possible, increase the usage of the theater. Uh, our, our outside group, so this is one of the things that I heard um, clear from our community when I walked in the door here, uh, was... Back to hell, okay, yes. Let's get the theater back to the usage that, that uh, we were able to do. Um, and so we uh, worked through that. Uh, Mr. Zeta and his staff, the, the calendar for the theater is now controlled out of our offices. Um, we will work to staff it um, with Mr. Roche. We'll make sure that it doesn't impact any of what we have going on. Uh, while at the same time, understand we're not building set, des or set designs like we used to. Um, so we don't have to close the theater for two months to build sets. We are aging an outside firm to build them, bring them in, and installs them. So the turnaround is much, much quicker. And as such, we should be uh, able to open up our theater uh, more than in the past year. So again, we know that we love Smith Road, we always are. Step forward, um, uh, one step for the whole community. For the community so. And these fees will, will help also, I mean, as far as things upgrades over there, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, so if, if these fees are supposed to go, then go up. Yeah, the capital costs are included in the calculation. Yes. Yep. That's what I was trying to say. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take your thoughts. Okay. We got it. Yeah, okay, it's good. Any other discussion? No. All in favor? All right. Closed. Thank you. Thank you. Action item 28, approval of disposal of district surplus property. President Vickers, this is the same company we've been using for the past few years when we have unusable or unwanted educational materials, supplies, or equipment with a value of less than $2,500. We contract with TLC Auctions to auction that equipment off or recycle it, and whatever we get a portion of the revenue. Very minimal. Doesn't amount much for us, but it does help to our warehouse ordinance. Public comment? Public questions? So, is it mostly your own computers or is it desks? Or we use a separate company for the computers, GPU uh -huh. waste, and the requirement of scrubbing the hard drives. So, uh -huh. they can do that, but our IT department um, wasn't comfortable with their way of signing off on that. So, this is mostly old desks and uh -huh. metal. The TVs, anything without an actual hard drive. Okay. Yeah. And where is this auction house? <laughs> <laughs> it's taken off site. To, uh, <laughs> there, okay. We don't auction. It's a big room in your garage. There's a park in the town. There's a park in the Old TVs. I got a big one. You're yeah. going in a new direction for your interior. I got it. Two TVs. Motion, please. I have a second. Any discussion? This, this, this is the one I'm just going to Yeah. Because they were just going like, to give it away. Like, they they so I suggested they could call you. I don't know if they ever did. Not yet, but we have it. <laughs> I think the four guys thought I was criticizing their way of doing it. Yeah, just saying, we just thought because you need right. some money off of it. Right. Shoot. Yeah. Okay, so we can get it. They might. Some of them will follow up on it. Oh, they'll even take things away of no value if 
points well, as long as you have things mind. with value. I mean, that's what I've got very much. The CCA stuff is not so much computers as physical right. stuff right, right. Mm -hmm. right now that they're trying to, and talk about clean out a warehouse. We can just imagine. We don't need to come. Okay. And big whole room is one of those things. For all the people. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Action item 29. Approval independent contract agreement with Chris McNeedy. Yes. In an amount not to exceed $5,798. I can do it, but I think Dr. Boyer would want to do it. Okay. I'm not so sure about that. But, um, Chris and Amy, I actually utilized him uh, the last two years uh, to do our staff. We uh, <coughs> did last year. I think we might have something a little like more on the air conditioning this year. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I gotta say, this group is competitive. So, so uh, Chris does a fantastic job. Uh, he and I, I and actually Victoria, uh, we're in constant contact just about uh, the different events that they do, what's the purpose of the event, what are we currently working on as, in the district, how does he. Uh, find a way to connect those. Um, so I, I'm pleased uh, we've been having a lot of good conversations about strengths and the work that we're doing around StrengthsFinder um, and how does he potentially utilize that information in developing and implementing uh, uh, our next activity for this next year. At the same time, this is an increase from uh, last year and the reason is uh, one of the things I've been uh, wanting to do in conjunction with Chris and, and other outside folks is to develop a, a leadership strand throughout the year for our leadership meetings. So uh, Chris is going to come and facilitate some of those meetings as well, uh, so that I also get to be a part of the learning um, and at times lead as well. So he and I have talked about that. And, uh, uh, so this contract actually though says the 16th and 17th, um, there are other hours that will be included in this that are already included. It doesn't split out that way throughout the rest of the year. Two hours here and there for leadership meetings that we have scheduled already uh, that he'll be for, uh, working on. So we've developed a scope and sequence of what we want to do around uh, these leadership skills. So, uh, so that's what he is uh, working on. So again, uh, this group's all invited to the, those days. We're going to do uh, the, the big work event on the uh, 17th. Sure. So we'll just write. And it will be indoors. It will be indoors on Ross. Public comment. Other questions? Motion for this. Second. And I, I, that was a draw. Whichever way you want to do it. Okay, so this how how many folks on your is it your team here? It's the leadership team as a whole. So, so yeah, that, uh, about it's 30 plus. 35. Yeah, it's about and vice plus. principals and so it's uh, assistant principals, uh, school psychologists also attend, uh, which we added them this last year. Um, the uh, classified management. Confidentials. So it's a good nice group. And I, I appreciate that he's coming during the year because I think, as much as Lisa appreciated not having to guide the negotiations with the IEB, having those people here to facilitate, and having a facilitator does allow you that opportunity to participate. Whereas, because I think that's really important that, mm -hmm. that everybody gets their own. That everybody needs that. Right. So I appreciate that. He's been great. I mean, he is, we've talked. Stop over planning for this, and he's uh, did some work and came across uh, another person that, that it's interesting how all these folks work together because mm -hmm. they're all, all in the same tours. And so he was resourcing with other people that he knows, identifying some modules, calling us back, talking us through it, and then telling us, I don't want to leave anything, I really don't think that's a good fit, <laughs> but I want to tell you what, you know, at least what I've done, and I, here's another direction that we're working. So he's been doing all this work in, in behind the scenes. And, so uh, to to this he is. He is. Right. Yeah. So I appreciate it. Right. Yeah. Any other discussions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Here's by vote. Action item 30 approval agreement with Learning Together Strengths Academy for a one day Gallup Strengths workshop on August 23rd, 2018, in an amount not to exceed $15,995. This is, uh, again, something that 
staff and I have been talking about related to how do the strengths that we all learned about, uh, many of us, uh, about ourselves, how does that then parlay on the classroom for students? And how do, uh, how do teachers utilize those strengths? Um, so this is uh, what I believe would be the next step in the journey. This is where we will actually be partnering with Gallup themselves. Um, and they will be sending out one of their trainers Learning Together is a facilitating agency within this, because uh, there's also a little piece that they'll be doing uh, at the end as a wrap up, as we look into kind of, again, next steps for really making it happen in the classroom. Now the very strict rules related to how many people can attend these sessions. Um, if you were to re have this session in the public sector, it would be probably three times the amount. Uh, they do have an educational discount that's about a third of what it they charge. Uh, so I'm really excited because I think it, it gives us that chance to do a little bit more look at yourselves and your strength. That's the, a little bit of the learning session. And then really the focus is, okay, so now that you remember how your strengths work and what it looks like for you as you're working, now how do you then work with your students specifically in those areas? So again, look, coming at our students from a positive lens, not deficit model. Folks will be for teachers. What's your focus goals? So we're working on the list. Um, as I could be very thankful. We always get more people that are on the list than we have spots for. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have to look to uh, for 20 our kind of work. We want to make sure we have some representation from those who are interested. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that there's a lot of interest at elementary school um, and, and um, at both school sites. We've got some interest uh, at Thurston because they're so into it and so far along. Mm -hmm. There and then trying to identify a potential couple of folks at the high school level. Um, they haven't done strengths yet, so it's not as it's not as new to them, but trying to change and identify one or two people that have the strengths that they say as well. And will they do the strengths with it? Who are those teachers trying to do? Will they do the strengths before they mm -hmm. yeah, that's they'll do it? Really good. Yeah. So. And then the elementary folks, you approved a contract already previously, but I both them already. Attached. Mm -hmm. This is uh, the intent of this is more along the lines of almost like a certification 
So what we're looking towards, what, uh, and I, I try to turn the ball to myself to be on the front lines of the district, so I think we should be setting the standard for this, is creating an opportunity for our teachers to become strength coaches for kids. And they have a lot of strength coaches uh, that are certif certified by GAP for adults. That's right. actually a certification that you can get and, uh, and coach people and get paid for it, actually. That's not the intent of what we're looking for, and GAP is trying to change their model to adapt it to schools. So this would be step one of this conversation and kind of moving forward and coming out of yeah, these same people may meet, we may visit them again in the spring or maybe in the summer of next year uh, as another day two. Uh, trying that out because uh, with Gallup being behind it, I think there's a lot of power in that mm -hmm. they're just someone else entity. Um, and then learning together first, the ones who really understand what it takes inside the school setting mm -hmm. to apply this knowledge. Gallup is more business model, so mm -hmm. right. they've, uh, this partnership has been beneficial for us as a school district uh, to be able to kind of leverage like that. I think that's fabulous, the two working together and oh, really? they get to take advantage of at the, uh, I noticed it in the classrooms, uh, at least one, for sure, at Thurston Open House, where they had it displayed on the wall. They had their strengths and what they've done with it in that classroom. It was really interesting to think that, the, that they were applying it there for the students to, to start to realize at that young age what they had a strength in and then how it related to others and that they were also different ones. So yes. it was nice to see and I hope we can get some more. Our students and the teachers mm -hmm. because of their exercises. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Action item 31 approval of amended employment contracts for the assistant superintendents of business, human resources, and public communications and instructional services. Dr. Glory. Uh, I bring forward tonight um, revisions. It wasn't so long ago. I think they were since January, I think, that these were approved. Um, and uh, simply uh, the amendment will add uh, an additional year to their contract, so it will be a three-year contract, uh, as well as uh, which is already agreed to their salary schedule. So I am just appreciative that, uh, again, uh, the board uh, directed me uh, to bring this forward. Uh, and it goes strongly in our team. Myself and the board uh, and the work that they do. Public comment or questions? Motion. Second. Second. Strong discussion. Yay. Yeah. 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 All right. Yes. And this is going to be this. Oh, we have to move. Okay. Oh, sorry. Yeah, correct. This is a place for public. This is a roll report that is tied to this. Government Code Section 54953 Subdivision C3 states that prior to taking final action on executive compensation, the board must orally summarize the recommendation for final action on, on the salary compensation and or fringe benefits that will be considered for certain executive officers in the district. The proposed contract for the renewed employment of Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources and Public Communications, Lisa Winston, Assistant Superintendent of Business Services, Jeff Dixon, and Assistant Superintendent of Instructional Services, Alicia Adipo, were posted to the board agenda for this meeting, along with the recommended motion that the board approve the amendments to the employment agreements and renew the appointment of these individuals for a term through June 30th, 2021. On behalf of this board, I will provide a summary of the compensation and fringe benefit provisions in the proposed contract. After public comment, this board will consider and take action on the item. The proposed contract amendments provide the following provisions which may qualify as compensation, salary, or fringe benefits. The proposed contract is subject to the same annual increases as approved by the board for the district's other employee groups. This includes a 2% on salary, on scheduled salary increase and a 1.5% off schedule one-time payment. So can we take public comment again? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Carries by vote. Action item 32 approval employment contract for the superintendent. And that's me. <laughs> so, as 
presented we are uh, having the amendment to uh, Dr. Flores' contract, uh, the one extensive contract through June 30th, 2021. Um, I need to read the same thing again, so should I read that now? Government Code Section 54953, Subdivision C3, states that prior to the final action on executive compensation, the board must orally summarize the recommendation for final action on the salary compensation and or fringe benefits that will be considered for certain executive officers in the district. The proposed contract for the renewed employment of Superintendent Jason Gloria was posted to the board agenda for this meeting, along with a recommended motion that the board approve the amendment to the employment agreement and the new appointment of the superintendent for a term through June 30th, 2021. On behalf of this board, I will provide a summary of the compensation and fringe benefit provisions in the proposed contract. After public comment, this board will consider and take action on the item. The proposed contract amendments provides following provisions, which may qualify as compensation, salary, or fringe benefits. The proposed contract is subject to the same annual increases as approved by the board for the district's other employee groups. This includes a 2% on-schedule salary increase, and a 1.5% off-schedule one-time payment. Public comment.
that our due diligence requires us to approach everything from all angles, we will get to a good place. Um, I think we'll get to a very good place. But I just, I, I, I want the committee to know that simply because there are questions and and I won't even call them concerns, um, it doesn't mean that that we felt that your work was not um, appreciated. Mm -hmm. it, can we get to that? Sorry. Yeah, 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 so, yeah well let's, said. Let's yeah. Start and I think that the comments, I think sometimes like visually, like about the calendar, like seeing all this different things, like I know you guys are doing them all, and everyone's different, but I think maybe for us just seeing like the different options with what everyone's proposing is important, and it doesn't mean we won't go back and the recommendations, or we don't, but I think it's just so that we can see and we can all stand for different things and support. Oh, and I want to say thank you to uh, Karen for the community report. Oh yeah, yes. it was great. It was it's like job. fabulous. That Sorry, was really I had that scribbled yeah. in the middle of some stuff. And being at a room with him, that was it was it was absolutely top notch. Mm -hmm. It was thank you. It was glossy. Glossy. <laughs> glossy. Well done. That's it. Well then, to Sarah, I'm glad to have Martha back. Um, ditto about graduation. I all the grunt promotions and graduations. I love seeing the excitement of our students going out into the world. It makes me feel better about the direction the world's going, seeing them leaving with positive attitudes and that energy to take it on. Um, and thank you, Dr. Gloria, for giving us the list of what students were most <coughs> taking at community college. I mean, I saw it was an introduction to psychology was a big favorite and then looked at Jeff Kahn's language abilities and then uh, sign language. Anyway, that was I thought that was helpful. But a lot of them were just one, 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 one. So it's meeting a variety of interests that we can't meet at the high school. Uh, I did go see the high school mental health plays. I know Dr. Gloria was there for a while. I thought they were excellent and I invited some other people to come, like um, I brought Marcia, Marcia Midnight because she was really happy because she said she has to deal, so she's from the um, hospital, mm -hmm. and deal with so many negative aspects of teenagers and health and drug issues that it just made her happy to see kids doing such positive things. Um, and I invited a woman uh, the, from Chalk Hospital, but she wasn't able to but uh, it, you know, afterwards thinking about approaching those tough issues, but in a way that is sensitive, in a way that isn't stereotypical, it, it would be really hard, really tough. So it was well done and very positive. That's it. I think hearing all of you comment about all the work that is done but also the work that's done to prepare for next year with all the capital budget. Mm -hmm. But I feel it's part of our responsibility to make sure that we get that message out to parents and community members mm -hmm. because I don't think that they really realize how much work, because it's, when you look at the federal government kicking something back to the state, because mm -hmm. everything, it, there's so much paperwork. You don't have short and succinct reports, you have lengthy reports. And so it's, there, it takes a lot of time to get all that done. And then we have also so much solo work facilities. I know people compliment on the facilities and I and I think that's a real high mark for our district because they are clean and well taken care of and well maintained and that affects that affects everyone's attitude toward the education students get. So I'm just I just always try to share that with people so that they understand that there's there's a lot behind the scenes that's done a lot of work all not just what happens in the classroom that makes that possible. Um, I'm glad that we continue that barbecue. We started that at a time when it was when the district was coming out of some really really tough years, and we wanted to say to our employees how much we value them. And I just think it's been very popular. The same with the holiday buffet in December. Uh, it's important to continue those. And they, again, they're not they're, there's a cost attached, but I think it's always there's a benefit that far outweighs that. When you look at the chairman that we have everyone involved and and so serving. It's just it's so relaxed and it's I think it's
it's um, a, a great plus for our, our employees. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. It was it's so busy at the end of the year. And, and then I thought it, and I also wanted, in the spirit of how we try, maybe Frank would have wanted me, how we try so hard to make changes and how hard it is to make change. I thought it, I loved it when Jenny asked to start over because she called it a graduation. Because that was so ingrained for so long and we made that, we were trying to make that really attempt that you only graduate at the end. And so we changed, and it's hard, it's still in there in your subconscious. Um, I thought that was terrific. <laughs> she directed that. Um, you know, what I noticed about graduation, and maybe I'm sure all of the rest of you did, is the kids put up with a lot of all the handshaking. And I'm sure, they make eye contact. Yeah, mm -hmm. I don't think there was any student that came across the stage that didn't make eye contact, and they and they they're saying thank you. It wasn't it wasn't gross. They are being thankful for their you know, education. I don't know whether that's because a lot of our kids go through you know, kindergarten to twelfth grade here. I mean, I don't know what the percentage of that is. I think it's pretty high. Mm -hmm. So they have such connection. They have such connection with the schools and the people that have um, been investing in them. So I just I, t I take a lot of pleasure in that. That that makes me think of something else. So Keith Hawkins spoke at a graduate school at the university, and one um, the substitute teacher was there, and they're both teachers. He didn't know who I was because I was a fellow teacher or parent or something. And he just said, "These are my most respectful students I've ever met. It's really cool. These are the parents here because I've worked out from all my years doing it. It's just terrific." And then not long after that, Mr. Hawkins went and mentioned how older and respectful they are. But then he said the most beautiful thing. He said, what I do know to be true, and he had three things in the future, so he said, the first thing, the one was, I'm going to stand here for an hour and speak to you, lecture you. You don't know me, and then you're going to clap for me. But those teachers, they do that with you every day, and they're going to clap for them. Mm -hmm. And the kids were like, oh. And the fact that they're moved by it, and they were like, oh, that big, this, of course, that gratitude for them saying that. Well, then we need to have, um, okay, that's uh, next year doing it again. It's on Tuesday, July 17th. If there's a request that we start the meeting, not the closed session, but the meeting at 5, because Dr. Glory needs to go to the conference. Oh, it's always about him. Jeez. I'm sure. Well, why do we have a while here while you're there? So he doesn't get to hear the airport and talk. Yeah, let's do that. Yes, Where is that yes. one right now? Right, and if we needed, I think what we did last time was we said we could have it afterwards and we could just miss it. We could adjourn to closed session. Right, we could adjourn to closed session, or we could adjourn during the week. But it's, so is that agreeable? Yeah. Yes, but with the caveat of Tori changing her team in person. So she will do that. She's going to 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 do that. So that we will be having that meeting on Tuesday, July 17th at 5 p.m. for the board room. We also have our special meeting this Thursday, Thursday, June 28th at 8 30. Motion to adjourn. So moved. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Great.